What's a cool fact about the human body that a lot of people don't know? If you drink nothing but purple Powerade for 3 days straight you poop will turn neon green. Some people are born with extra ribs called cervical ribs which grow from the C7 vertebrae in the neck. It's a weird and rare mutation that a lot of people don't even know they have. Although it is also a cause of thoracic outlet syndrome, which is where pressure is applied to the nerves, veins and arteries running into the arms. It can be really painful, and in some rare cases, can cause gangrene in the arms. If left untreated it can kill you, if you're really unlucky. Source, I have the non-cervical rib induced variety. My sister has that. She had to have both of her extra ribs removed. The circulation in her arms would get cut off if she raised them to shoulder height or above. She would just stop having a pulse in her arm. The doctor asked if he could do a write up about her case for a medical journal. But you have enough potassium in your body to create a very small bomb. So I bought all this C4 for nothing. And now, you're on another list. Some people will cough if they put something in one ear. A very small percentage will cough if something is in either ear. It is called an old ear cough reflex. Really late but I discovered this thing during my thesis. We were researching patients with neurological problems and people who had brain injuries. And we found a woman in her 30 that had had part of her brain removed. More specifically the area that activates when you move your body. Well she was moving and talking with just some minor missteps and theoretically it was not possible. She was paralyzed in the first 3 months after the operation. She was caught in a car accident, if I remember correctly. We were trying out a new scanner for the brain. And we found out that an area of the brain that wasn't supposed to work and control the movement was doing just that. The occipital area, usually controls the vision, was now working as a motor control area. The brain is really amazing. Neuroplasticity as it's known, is the brain's ability to adapt in such ways. Truly incredible. I saw something on Nova. I think about this. There was a baby born in Japan missing half or most of his brain. Doctors told the parents to just put him in an institution as he'd be blind, non-verbal, and almost certainly non-mobile for his life. His mother took him home and massaged and talked to him and treated him like a normal baby. The doctors were astonished to learn that he actually could see, even though he was born without that part of the brain. And he could move and speak. He wasn't normal by any stretch, but he progressed farther than they ever thought he could. The brain that remained took over all the parts it needed to is how they put it. You know the smell of rain or disturbed soil? It's a compound produced by bacteria called giasmin, and the human nose is extremely sensitive to it. We can smell it at as low a concentration as 5 parts per trillion. Edit. Sorry for my confusing wording. The compound is called giasmin, not the bacteria. A woman was found without a cerebellum. The part of the brain that controls motor abilities of the body. She is alive. And has no real side effects from this condition that we know of. Edit. Okay to clarify. Her cerebellum was not removed. Nor did I do it. She was born without one. And the medical professionals. Again. Not me. Found out after she complained about a headache which lead to an MRI. The bone that supports your eyeball. Called the orbital floor. Is paper thin and has a large empty cavity, called the maxillary sinus. On the opposite side, when you get it hard in the eyeball, instead of your eyeball itself rupturing, the bone underneath your eye breaks, which is called an orbital floor fracture. This releases the pressure from the impact and saves your eyeball. If you crush a beach ball against a concrete wall, you can pop it. But if you try crush it against a styrofoam wall, the wall breaks, but the beach ball is fine. An amazing evolutionary adaptation to protect your eyesight. There is a muscle called palmaris longus in the forearm missing in about 10% of the population. You can easy test if you have it by putting your pinky and thumb together while holding your palm facing up and flex the hand upwards. If one tendon is standing out more than the others that's palmaris longus. The war that's constantly happening inside of you. Everyone knows about your immune system, but the sheer complexity of it is amazing. Like, 
Your body has neutrophils which are like the generic white blood cell that constantly goes around your blood vessels seeking out foreign objects. But did you know there are cells called macrophages which are like way better neutrophils in the fact that neutrophils mostly swallow bacteria to kill them. Macrophages do this to except they can swallow close to 100. You have stuff like dendritic cells whose main goal is to be an early warning system. They swallow an invader then carry a piece of it back to T-cells to activate them. Once they are activated, T-cells swarm that specific invader and kill anything that has that antigen. I didn't even name close to all of the cells that are doing constant battle inside of you 24 over 7 365 days a year. So next time you have a flu or an infection, think of the little guys inside you who gladly fight the good fight. Babies are born without kneecaps. They develop around 2 years edit. They have a cartilage like thing that protects the knees. I've been told so many times that there's still something. Thanks. Gonna go punch a baby in the knee now. Scientific name for your thumb is Parlex and your big toe is Hallux. Not just yours. Everybody's. You mostly breathe out of one nostril at a time. And the back quote dominant nostril switches every hour or so. Your hands and feet alone account for more than half of all the bones in your body. 106 over 206. Got a point out you're including the wrists and ankles in that count. I immune privilege. Your immune system doesn't know your eyes exist. There's a chance that if you get an eye injury or an infection near your eyes the immune system will think your eyes are a foreign body and you'll go blind. Apparently some peoples in Asia have a bunch of DNA from Denisovians. Another hominid people coexisted and interbred with. Cutting the corpus callosum connects two brain hemispheres can produce some freaky results such as your hand doing shit that your conscious mind is t aware of writing a sentence or scratching an itch without knowing for instance i saw a program back in the dark ages when i was a kid it was all about the brain one of the things they talked about was that procedure they had a guy they were testing one hand did better with creative things the other did better with logic at one point they were trying to get him to do something with the hand that didn't have an easier time with it. I think it was something like stacking blocks. He wasn't supposed to use the hand that could do it better. But as if the hand had a mind of its own it kept interjection itself and at one point literally grabbed the hand having a problem and moved it out of the way in obvious frustration. Edit. The user Killerbake found the bit of the program I saw and posted a link. Vitality. You'd be surprised how much blood you can lose and fully recover reasonably quickly. If it drops below a certain threshold, even if replaced fast, you will appear to recover for a few hours then die of multiple organ failure. Edit. Got this in an anatomy book that I was actually reading as distraction while recovering from surgery myself. It just said that if it went low enough, the refill wouldn't solve it. The person would appear to recover well then have systemic failure and die, would like confirmation of it. Actually, I remember it impressed me at the time. The dive reflex. When your face is submerged in chilled water and you hold your breath it causes your heart rate to lower and blood supply to be increased to vital organs such as the heart and brain. This is useful to help increase the amount of time you can hold your breath but is also useful in helping to manage PSVT, paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia, which is characterized by occasional bouts of high heart rate. Eyes color isn't strictly based on recessive slash dominant. That's a major incorrect oversimplification. LE5. The color isn't a turned on gene that goes brown, blue, green. Everyone technically actually has blue slash gray eyes. Except for a small population that has amber eyes. What makes eyes appear not gray slash blue is the same thing that gives people skin color of all types and freckles. Layers of melanin. The more layers, the darker the color. Light layers appear as increasingly darker shades of green slash brown and the heavier layers darker and darker brown. The layers don't always cover evenly, like freckles. Which is why people can have green and blue eyes with brown in them. 
This is also how the creepy surgery to get blue eyes. If you have brown can exist. They literally zap the melanin. Amber colored eyes are the exception. Because they are based on yellow pigment mixed in with a blue. As the layers go on their eyes become more copper slash orange. Some very green eyed human will have a little of the yellow as well. Other animals have other pigments. And many get more of the yellow slash orange pigments than what is commonly found in humans. Think of cats with orange eyes for example. We are. By cell numbers. More bacteria than human. Germaphobes are crying. The human body contains enough fat to make 7 bars of soap. Your body can. In a way. Evolve during your life to fit your needs. Say you are a New York City cab driver with a normal brain. You start when you are young and are very dependent on a map or directions from the passengers. As you continue to do this for years, your brain adapts to handle its new job. Areas of your brain in charge of spatial awareness and memory of road starts to grow. Building a map in your brain. MRIs have shown a significant increase. It's not just your brain though. There is a village somewhere in the Mediterranean. I believe. Where they adapt to living in water. Their homes are built on stilts in the water and they are strictly pescatarian by necessity. Their eyes develop thicker outer layers for seeing underwater for long durations as well as a huge lung capacity. Humans are amazing. Edit, wrote this from mobile after just waking up. Details were fuzzy. Adaptation may be a better way to describe what's happening. The tribes is Southeast Asia, not Mediterranean. The Maguire cab study showed the brain neuroplasticity. It is London cabbies, not New York. Thank you for those who helped fact check me down low. And yes, all nature is amazing, not just humans.